Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Foolery. Our first contestant for the evening is Selene Cole Fox from the West Alliance. She will be doing Susan DeWitt's Nobody's Fool. Celine? Celine, sorry. Celine. Celine, mm, sorry. I can't see. Stop my video. Yeah, okay. Do it. I am bored. Entertain me. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Yes, sir. Um, um, a song, a song, a song. In Randy Town, where I was born, there is a fair maid dwelling. Made every lad. Well, she did, and it was true, and she's no better than she ought to be, isn't it? Well, then, let's try a different song. <clears throat> Give me a shilling, give me a shilling, and I'll go away. Give me a shilling, and I'll go away. Give me a shilling, and I'll go away. If not, I'll play and play and play and keep this racket up all day. Give me a shilling. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my lord, thank you, my lord. And now. A story, an absolutely true story. I was there, and you can confirm with anybody who was at that 12th night who was still sober at the time. Uh, we were presenting the the boar's head, the boar's head. Da -da -dum -da -dum. Uh, it wasn't a real boar's head. I had fashioned a pastry boar's head uh, filled with mince meat, and I minced the meat with these very hands, and I bore the mince mince meat. Um, filled boar's head with a pastry crown upon its head up unto the head table. And I bore it to King Guy and I exhorted him to decrown this, this pretender and start, start the, the, the pie course, which he did with, a great, with right good verve. And he started scooping the mincemeat out of the head of the boar. And I had an announcement for the audience. I have an announcement for the assembled. The king has the brains of a pig. Uh, he looked at me. I looked at him. I looked back at the audience. I have an amendment to the previous announcement. The king does not have the brains of a pig. He looks at me. I look at him. I say to the audience, I'm going to leave now while I still have a head. Goodbye. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. And next on our performance list for the evening, we have Lord Vincenzo doing from the West, and he will be do juggling Shakespeare. Apparently I was still muted, sorry. This is my take on Shakespeare's uh, speech from As You Like It. All the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. One man in his time plays many parts. His acts, his acts being seven ages, seven ages, 
First, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shiny morning face, creeping like a snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like a furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. And then the soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded as the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick to quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice in fair round belly with good cape and lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of strange saws and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts to the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and his pouch on side, his youthful hose well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shake, his big manly voice creeping again to childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, Sans taste, sans everything. Thank you, good night. Huzzah. Thank you. <clears throat> Following that act, we have Master Allen with, from the West as well with Cry Havoc and let loose the puns of war. Greetings and well met, gentles of the known world. I am Alan Benvo. As you can see behind me, uh, uh, I'm a pelican in its piety. Now, uh, I've made many journeys uh, to many strange lands outside of the known world. I have came across an gr interesting group of knights. Um, they were also barbers. Apparently, they, they rode out to shave the world. Now, uh, another group of, of, of knights I found was uh, ones that were pastry chefs. Apparently, they, they gave villains their just desserts. Oh, but but the most interesting group was the uh, uh, the group of knights who were also bards. Uh, the, now they rode out each evening singing loudly to deal to deal with the the foe, while the rest of their kingdom could sit back and listen to the nightly muse. Now, uh, the many interesting kings I came across. Uh, there was a king in a far off land. The the uh, the, the land had many lakes and ponds and uh, quite beautiful. The, 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 gen, the uh, populace would dangle their feet in the water to cool down at night. And the uh, uh, problem was, was there's these little biting fish and uh, they would tend to lop off toes occasionally. Now, the king was greatly disturbed by this. Um, uh, and he wouldn't allow people into his court if, if they were uh, missing these toes. Uh, he was rapidly becoming lactose intolerant. The, uh, but, oh, the, 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 the king that I met, oh, my Lord, uh, 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 what a battle plan did he have? Now, 
And his kingdom, the problem was, was armor. It wasn't terribly well made. His knights kept dying in battle. And he kept thinking, how am I going to protect my knights? And he came up with the greatest solution. The uh, Now, he had a lot of serfs in his kingdom. And he came up with the greatest of plans. It, well, each night, you would... Uh, a strap a uh, surf to the front and back of the each knight and uh, send his knights into battle that way. Well, the, the surfs would take the damage and it wound up that his knights would live. But, you know, your common surf, I mean, they're, they're not really that fun to look at. Um, um, but he came up with even a better plan. He would wrap the surfs in uh, foil. So the, the, the next battle... You could see the knights and shining farmers. Now, uh, I did take a crack at the arts and sciences. The uh, I came across this truth-telling tree. The uh, the tree kindly lent me one of its branches, and uh, I told I would make. And I told the tree I would make a uh, harp out of that branch. Well, I began carving. I began carving, and uh, the. The branch kept getting smaller and smaller and little imperfections, and the tree was really shocked. It, it, it discovered that I was making a uh, liar out of it. And finally, show me a duke who goes in, into battle with a you torch that upon his... Ooh, someone's, someone's trying to uh, pun, uh, interpun with me. But the, the finally, the uh, 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 show me a duke who goes into battle with the torch upon his head, and you'll see grace under fire. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well... That was a groaner. <laughs> and following that wonderful act, we have the wrong and honorable Master Darian with the pomposity song. <laughs> Greetings, your majesties, Kiaran and Alice, and your cousins, noble court, good gentles all. Now our good parents, have always told us that it is not right or good to mock people for their attributes or their misfortunes, but it does seem meet to have fun with failings of character, quite apart from any individual, and our patrons then leave us with our heads intact. So, I treat on fictional individuals, which is a pair of words that means simply archetype. And if you think you recognize someone you know, even yourself, this can be no intent or fault of mine. And I pray you, sit back, have fun, sing along. A laurel strode into our shop, held their opinions high, detailed the flaws in all our wares, including how and where and when and why. I'm a laurel. And our heads popped off. We couldn't believe the crap that we just heard. Don't take yourself so seriously. By God, you're just absurd. Now our battle plan seemed good to us. Fun and victory for our clan. Until that night, he called it dumb. Suicide to a man. <laughs> I'm a knight. <laughs> and our heads popped off. We couldn't believe the crap that we just heard. Don't take yourself so seriously. By God, you're just absurd. <sighs> now, what do you think you're doing there? You're just splashing like a fish. Be a deer, hand over that towel, and I'll show you how to dry a dish. Oh, well, you know, I am a pelican deary. <laughs> and our heads popped off. We couldn't believe the crap that we just heard. 
Don't take yourself so seriously. By God, you're just a bird. Now I wanted to write a damn fine verse for a master of defense. But his demand for gigante style just made no gosh darn sense. Clearly you are writing for a sport fencer. I am a master of the defense. <laughs> And our heads popped off. We couldn't believe the crap that we just heard. Don't take yourself so seriously. By God, you're just absurd. Don't you see this coronet? I don't care if you're the queen. I ran this joint full 30 times by AS-17. I was totally royal, dude. And our heads popped off. We couldn't believe the crap that we just heard. Don't take yourself so seriously. By God, you're just absurd. <clears throat> now, lords, ladies, gentles all, I the one who am singing here, but share wisdom at your call. Have only hope you'll do what's right. I know best, now that is all, cause I'm a bard. And your heads popped off, you couldn't believe the crap that you just heard. Don't take yourself so seriously, by God you're just absurd. Don't be such a pompous silly old ass, by God you're just absurd. A true bard can always make fun of himself. And following that act, we have Viscount Sir Karen with Squire's Fealty, Tale of Two Belts. Greetings. I am Viscount Sir Karen from the Barony of Lionsgate, the Principality of Tyre in the Kingdom of Volunteer. And I'd like to share a tale with you today between a squire and a knight, what I call the Tale of Two Belts. So first I have a knight. This rope will represent the knight. It's good, solid, white, strong. Now we need a squire. Where can you find a squire when you need one? I know I had one here somewhere. Great. I got a squire. He's in here. Brought him along. Shiny red belt. Now, I used to tell this story about two knights, but the problem was it was really hard to follow what was going on. Couldn't keep track, so I had to change it a little bit. So now, a squire at an event, came out to me and said, Knight, I need to know, can you explain to me what fealty is? Would you please explain this to me? And the knight said, most certainly, squire, after giving it some consideration. And then he said, you know what? Fealty is like a knot. So we'll just tie a knot. So we have a knot in our rope. And what fealty is, is how I'll teach you this is by spending time together. We will support each other, serve together, and what will happen is over time, you'll find that fealty, not only is it how I serve the king and the crown, but fealty goes the other way too. It goes to you as well. And through some knightly counsel, privately of course, you'll find that fealty transfers to you or my fealty goes to you as well. But you have to be careful with fealty. There's a lot of pressure when it comes to fealty. And what you'll find with squeezing of the pressure, your fealty can waver. And what you'll find is it can actually slide and waver and change and actually fall off and be removed. But the great thing about it is even over time and with determination, fealty can be regained. It can actually be reattached. Now, the other thing that applies with fealty is inspiration. And inspiration comes in many ways. And I happen to have some inspiration in my pocket. This is invisible. You can't see it. But what inspiration to do? It will actually make fealty jump. And what that does is that this is the magic that helps us serve the crown and provide the support that is needed to, for our kingdom and the SCA. But all that pressure carries a toll. And you'll find that even with that, fealty over time can still slide again and make you question your decisions. But the thing is, is as time goes on, you will find that 
fealty will become ingrained in you, a part of you, and will grow with you. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I cannot restart my video. However, oh, there we go. Wonderful. We have one great act after another. And following that one, we have Archos and Athelina with Princess and the Bear. Big dragon, can you tell me a bedtime story? Okay, little dragon, what story do you want to hear? Can you tell me the story of the princess and the bear? Okay, little dragon, lie down and close your eyes, and I'll tell you the story of the princess and the bear. Once upon a time, there was a magical forest, and lots of creatures lived in the forest. Sometimes the trees fell down. There were birds and squirrels and deer and leopards and griffins and unicorns and all the usual animals. And there were even sometimes humans. There was a bear who lived in the forest and he liked to dance. He danced to the songs of the birds and sometimes he even hummed along. Doopity doopity doo, doopity doopity doo, doopity doopity doo, 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 doo. But one day, a mysterious darkness fell over the forest. The birds went away. They all became silent. So the bear stopped dancing. And he went into his cave and hid. On the edge of the forest, there was a magical castle. The castle was made of fancy stones that stayed up in graceful arches all by themselves. And in the forest, there lived a princess. And the princess had a beautiful voice and she loved to sing. And she usually went to the edge of the forest to sing with the birds. But when the darkness fell on the forest, she stopped going. So she stayed in her castle and she hummed, but it was lonely. And she had to hum to herself. La, 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 la. But she was very lonely. So one day she decided to go to the forest, even though it was dark. And she went to the edge of the forest and she tried to find some birds, but there were no birds. And she hummed a little bit, la, la, la. And she went a little bit deeper into the forest because maybe there would be birds there. And she hummed a little bit, la, 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 but there were no birds. And she went a little deeper into the forest and she realized she was lost. But when she gets sad, she sings. So she continues humming and continued trying to find her way out of the forest. La, 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 la. Now, during this beautiful song, it sounded like some new kind of bird. The bear woke up. Whoa, I hear a song. That's a beautiful bird. I should go find it. And so he went into the forest to try and find the songbird. And the princess sang, la, 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 and it got a little bit brighter. And the bear walked through the forest thinking, I wonder if it's a firebird, because it's making the forest brighter. I should find it so I can dance with it. And he shuffled his feet. And the princess heard shuffling and thought, oh, there must be a person there. And they can help me out of the forest. So she went to try and find it. And the bear shuffled closer, and the princess sang closer, until they ran into each other. Ah, a bear, she said. Ah, a 
princess, Bear said. Wait. Your voice sounds like the voice of the bird that was singing. Well, I was singing, but I'm no mere bird. Oh, my mistake. Wait. Are your feet the feet that were shuffling with my song? Well, yes. Oh, I thought there was a person who could lead me out of the forest. Well, I was dancing, but I'm a bear. Oh, my mistake. Will you keep dancing? Will you keep singing? Okay. And so the princess hummed and the bear danced. La, 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 la. And the bear hummed. And the princess danced. And the harder they sang and danced, the broken forest got. And they sang louder and danced harder until the darkness lifted. And the birds came back and the squirrels shimmied their tails and the forest was saved. And the princess decided the deepest part of the forest wasn't scary at all. And she stayed there singing and dancing with the bear and their friends. And that little dragon is the story of the princess. And the bear. Little dragon. Little dragon. Uh, what a wonderful evening we're having so far. Following that act, we have Scholastica Joyce Kors with from the East and Atlantia with Magical Nonsense. Where are you? Hello? Anybody out there? Oh, there you are. I thought you got lost. Oh my goodness. Let's try again. Ah! A little note to get us started on. Are you ready? <laughs> I love a good note to start on. But you know what I like even better? I like a little music, a little frivolity, and well, I like to make fun of alliteration. <laughs> I do. So first, <laughs> a tutor who tooted a flute. Try to tutor to tutors to toot. Is it harder to toot or to tutor to tutors to toot? <laughs> Did you get that one? Oh, maybe I should try it a little slower and you can catch up. Here we go. A tutor who tooted a flute. Try to tutor to tutors to toot. Is it harder to toot or to tutor to tutors to toot? <laughs> well, that was fun, but I think we can do a little better. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Wait, we have 
have more. Oh, look, look, I have two hands. We should try this again. Here we go. <clears throat> La da 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 La 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 what i know it works i'm not cheating let's try that again i'll do it with your string then here we go la 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 la. Let's try something different. I'm getting a little thirsty. Are you ready? But wait. I thought a thought. But the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought. If the thought I thought had been the thought I thought I thought, I wouldn't have thought so much. You know how it is, right? Here's some plain water. I'm really thirsty. But I think I need a little more. Maybe I need to juice it up. La 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 la. You saw that was plain water, right? La 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 la. Oh, doesn't that look much better? La 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 la. Mmm, that's much better. Let me try that again. Perfect. La 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 la. La 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 tell you one more very short story because the king told me about his love for bacon and I have a particularly good alliteration about bacon. Here we go. It started long ago. Peter Percival Patterson had a pet pig named Orky. This pet pig Orky loved pie. He liked pie for breakfast, pie for lunch, and pie for supper. Peter Percival Patterson liked peach pie, pineapple pie, pie of pie, pumpkin pie, pineapple pie, and minced tarts. Peter Percival Patterson's egg porky ate so much pie. Do you know what he did? <laughs> he popped. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much.
And that's all I have for this evening. <laughs> Good night. Once again, absolutely wonderful. The next two acts that we have are from Mikhail and Ian, De and theirs will be shown live streaming back to back. Mikhail's is Mikhail's Fire and Very Good Night. And Ian Douglas says, don't try this at home. Good evening. My name is Mikhail Medyevet. I am from the Kingdom of Triberis, the best kingdom in the world at our location at this time. I am very pretty. You may have heard me say this before because it is ultimate truth. I am going to show you stick work. But first, did you know stick work was invented in Russia? It's true. We learned it from bears. There's video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to light this on fire, not die, it's very critical. And then I am going to imagine you are exploding with applause. You are gushing with excitement. You are throwing on the clothes at me. The female this time, if you please. If at any point I burst into flame, someone please put me out. So we are going to start by twirling the stick around in a circle. So that it is in a circle, it's also not square. Very important. Geometry was invented in Russia. Is true. Before this, all we did had rocks. Just rocks. It was like music, but louder. There are many things you can do with the fire. You can kill yourself. You can kill others. You can kill bears. You can kill wolves. Basically, there is a lot of killing going on with fire, but that is a good thing. And now, for a little big finale, oh, it goes up in the air, but it is cut, and I am not dead. This is like gift from God. My ex-wife right now is not happy. At the end of this, we are going to look at a cinder block, and it is going to explode. And I think that now, is the time. It's like I embarrassed myself, but better than this, let's try it again as if I, I, I that was just plan to put out stick. Uh -huh. Good plan. My goodness gracious, this is not like, well, did you know failure was invented in Russia? It's true. And when we fail, we burn everything. Just like that. Hello, good gentles. Good evening to you all. I'm Lord Ian Douglas, and this is my entry to the foolery part of the Bardic War. Hello, everybody. Just so you know, today is the first day these have been lit since the pandemic. Dear Drake, I hope you understand what this means. <laughs> I've had people ask me, what happened to your hair? I have one word for you. Wind.
with a blade of grass in the way. Slightest thing can mess you up at this, and right now it's a blade of freaking grass. Now, if you're paying attention, you know that fire goes up. So as long as I hold you here, I'm okay. However, if you're paying even more attention, you'll realize there's another end to this thing. That end is not my friend. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. That's what you're getting. And with that performance, it brings us to the end of our wonderfulery at half 45 minutes. I hope everyone enjoyed all they saw. We had some wonderful acts to observe this evening. Have a great night.